Hello, today we'll be discussing the history of countries in Northern South America. I thought it would be interesting to look at the independence movement of South America to determine how and why the original coalition of Gran Colombia fell apart after achieving independence from Spain. After watching this video, I hope that you were able to analyze the causes of the Colombian independence movement and analyze what caused the fractures within the Colombian independence movement leading to an overall answer of why did South America's Gran Colombia nation fall apart after the South American independence movements. So first, let's get a little bit on the history of the region leading up to the rebellions. For years, the people of Colombia and the surrounding areas lived in small, independent chiefdoms. The people who lived in Colombia were separate from the Incan Empire as the Colombian landscape is full of rivers, mountains, and other geographic barriers, which made the area very difficult for one contiguous empire to control the region. This is not the last time that you, we will reference the geographic barriers in relation to Gran Colombia. In the 1500s, Spanish explorers from several independent expeditions from both the north by sea and the south from offshoots of Francisco Pizarro's conquest of the Incans, attempted to conquer the Colombia territory in the late 1550s. The group sparred over control of the region up until 1554, when the King of Spain formally put the colony under the control of his viceroy, or local governor, of Peru. During this time, the Spanish brought in many African slaves so many that the Africans came to outnumber the native population of the area. The Spanish, of course, were the only ones with real political power in the region. As time went on, local inhabitants became increasingly dissatisfied with Spanish rule. Although initially rebellions were mainly for the purpose of settling political problems within the Spanish system, Spain's issues during the Napoleonic Wars in the early 1800s destroyed their capacity to rule from abroad. One by one, individual Colombian cities began to declare their independence. Note that the country itself was not committing itself to any grand coalition, but rather was existing as it had going all the way back to when South American natives had ruled over the region, in a manner of individual principalities, not a large extensive empire. During this time, a man named Simon Bolivar became known as a leader dedicated to the liberation of South America from Spanish rule. Bolivar briefly succeeded in defeating several Spanish armies, but the Spanish monarchy returned to ruling South America after the Napoleonic Wars. However, Bolivar returned from exile several years later and defeated the Spanish again in 1819. The elated peoples of northern South America from modern-day Ecuador, Colombia, Venezuela and Panama formed a new nation called Gran Colombia. The state was supposed to function under a federal system where each individual province would retain sovereignty over its own region with the federal government maintaining overall control of the nation. Much like in American history, two factions took over the political landscape of the country. The centrists, who wanted a stronger, more centralized government, and the federalists, who wanted more independent state governments. Bolivar, the new president of Gran Colombia, went south to help Ecuador and Venezuela continue their struggle against Spanish rule. Instead, he left a man named Francisco de Paula Santander in charge. In the time Bolivar spent fighting for these other two countries, Gran Colombia began to fall apart. Before we transition, I apologize for all the mispronunciations I've probably made. With that said, let's get into the details to answer our central question. Why did Gran Colombia not succeed as a nation? First and foremost, this region, with all of its geographic differences, has never been very conducive to the establishment of a massive unified state or empire. No power that has ever controlled this region, even the Spanish colonial monarchy, ever ruled this government without dividing it with regard to the geographic distinctions of the area. As a result, there was resentment to any attempt at centralization of the Gran Colombian government. Second, the diverse population of Gran Colombia made agreement very difficult between groups. While much of the U.S. had remained a highly stratified social hierarchy following their revolution, South American nations did not. 
people from many different backgrounds participated in the revolutions in major roles. This made it very difficult to find common ground or consensus on all of the issues that go into facing a newly born country. Fears of racial unrest also provoked further separation. Vice President Santander claimed that former slaves were developing projects of domination. Simply put, the people of these countries were from very different backgrounds, contributing to the decreased likelihood that such a vast nation in a geographically separated area would prove successful. Economic issues also plagued Gran Colombia. For example, when tax laws in Ecuador changed in a way that shifted the financial burden to landowners, only 195,000 pesos were collected. Estimated revenue for the government was supposed to be around 3 million. Because higher classes rejected shouldering the tax burden, the government attempted a system based on flat taxation. The government still failed to collect it effectively. With little money to properly run the administration, Gran Colombia did not have the resources to sustain the country. Last, it appears as though the unity of the country was only held together by Simon Bolivar. It is no coincidence that the nation's death is practically identical to Bolivar's. The issues already discussed led to increased attempts by Bolivar to stamp out opposition to centralization. Bolivar assumed dictatorial powers over Gran Colombia in 1828 and tried to reduce regional autonomy, but failed as Vice President Santander's reforms toward regional autonomy had already been functioning for years. As the region gains increased independence, it becomes very difficult for a central government to suddenly pull it away. Once Bolivar left, it became too great a task for anyone to attempt to pull off, and thus, within a matter of months from the Constitutional Convention of Gran Colombia in 1830, the nation was gone. And so it was. A nation brought together in the defeat of their colonial overlords became forever divided into separate regional countries. The example of Gran Colombia is instructive into the difficulties of state building and the pitfalls of regional loyalty. As nations around the world increasingly desire control in regional autonomous affairs, they must remember the complex factors that go into building and maintaining nations. Sectional tendencies, diversity, economic problems, and inability of a central government to service the needs of a people can lead to the instability of an entire nation. It is my hope that world leaders can perhaps learn something from the example of Gran Colombia to help them make the decision to do what is best for the people as a whole, whether that be by letting a group of people go or by fixing the issues that make them want to leave.